Hello, I'm the mountainous Mr. Daycock, and today I'm going to be teaching you about infinite geometric series. But before that, let's have a quick look at this one. So evaluate the geometric series 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus blah 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 plus 1 over 1024. So as we know, our sum, our series, is equal to, or in fact Sn if you want to think about it, because we need to ask ourselves how many terms there are, a lots of 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. And now we just need to know those three things. So what is a? Well, a is going to be equal to 1. What is R? Well, it's going down by a half each time. It's halving each time. So we're multiplying each time. Well, it's a half divided by one, or which is the same as a quarter divided by a half. Have you read it down? R is a half. And what is N? Well, N we're going to have to work out. We know that... Um, our un is equal to a r to the n minus 1 and we can just plug in these values we know that un our last term is 1 over 1024 that's equal to 1 for a times by a half to the power of n minus 1 so we get 1024 is equal to 1 half to the n minus 1 but 1024 is a half to the power of 11, or let's say we put this as 2 to the 1 over 2 to the, sorry, not 11. I'm overthinking, I'm thinking ahead. 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 1 half to the power of n minus 1, which is the same as 1 half to the 10 is equal to 1 half to the n minus 1. And so n minus 1 is equal to 10, and so n equals 11. And that's the 11 I was thinking of a minute ago. And so now we can just plug everything into this formula. We know that Sn is going to be equal to 1 for a multiplied by 1 minus 1 half to the power of n all over 1 minus 1 half. Which is going to give us the answer of, well we can do some simplifying, we get Sn is equal to 1 times something is just 1, so we get 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of 11, because of course our n is 11, we get 1 over 2048, all over 1 half, because 1 times that minus a half is 1 half. And so we get Sn is equal to, or well, 1 minus 1 over 2048 is going to be 2047 over 2048, and we're dividing that whole thing by a half, and therefore Sn is equal to 2047 over 1024, which is 1 and 1023 over 1024. Okay, and that's our answer. This is equal to 1 and 1023 over 1024. Okay, now let's look at this question. Evaluate the infinite geometric series, one plus a half plus a quarter plus forever. So we still have a is equal to a one, r is equal to a half, but n is equal to infinity? Well, that doesn't make sense. We can't really, infinity isn't a number in the standard real numbers. There are number systems where it's a number, but in the real numbers where we're dealing with it, it's not a number. So, we need to think about this in different terms. We know that Sn is equal to a lots of 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Well, what is S? infinity well, we can't just plug infinity in well so what we're going to do is we're going to say it's equal to the limit as n tends to infinity because we have to use limits of sn which is of course the limit 
as n tends to infinity of a lots of 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And now we have to be a little bit careful because there's only one part of this that matters. Because in fact, I could expand and simplify. The key thing is, what is this? Everything, nothing else has n in it. So what is r to the n as n tends to infinity? Well, it depends on r. Because there is a key thing. If r was equal to 1, then r squared is 1, and r cubed is 1, and r to the 4 equals 1. So if r equals 1, then r to the n, the limit, as n tends to infinity, is also 1. OK. What about if r is 2? Let's do a different colour for that. What if r is 2? Well then r squared equals 4 and r cubed equals 8 and r to the 4 equals 16. And therefore, if we can notice here that it's just getting bigger and bigger, the limit as n tends to infinity of r to the n is equal to infinity. And that's true for r any r bigger than, zero, uh, bigger than 1. If r is at all bigger than 1, it's tending to infinity. What about if r equals minus 1? Well then r squared is 1, r cubed is equal to minus 1, r to the 4 is equal to 1, and it's just going to oscillate back and forth between 1 and minus 1, 1 and minus 1, as such there's no limit. There's no definable limit because it jumps back and forth. And the same will be true if I put r is if r less than less than minus one, it's still going to jump back and forth. Okay. So currently the only one that works is r equal to one. r equal to one is the only one that works. What about r's between one and minus one? Well, if I put r equals, let's say, nine tenths, then r squared is going to be equal to 81 over 100. r cubed is going to be equal to 729 over 1,000. And the actual numbers don't matter from this point. What you should notice is it's getting smaller. And we can do it with, say, a quarter. If it was a quarter, it would then go to a sixteenth. We go to 64th, and this is getting small very, very quickly. And even with negative numbers, if it was negative a quarter, it would go to a positive 16th, and then negative 1 over 64. And although these are still oscillating, negative, positive, negative, positive, they're still going towards 0. And so at any point, if r is between minus 1 and 1, we get that the limit as n tends to infinity of r to the n is equal to zero. And so we also have r being between one and minus one also works. These are the two cases that work for r to the n. It doesn't give us either infinity as a limit or no limit because it oscillates. So let's go back up to here. Now we know that, how does that help? So we know, well, let's try r equals 1 first. Let's see what happens when we plug r, in, r equals 1 in. Well, we know that r to the n is going to equal to 1. And we know that r equals 1, and we get a is equal to a lots of 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which is equal to a multiplied by 0 over 0. And that's not good. This is an indeterminate. We can't define what that's going to be. So that's not working either. When, it, when it's 1, it's not going to work at all. So in fact, we're left with one situation. And R, for this to work, R must be between 1 and minus 1. Or sometimes written as 
the absolute value of r must be less than 1. OK, and what happens in that case? Well, s infinite is equal to the limit, as n tends to infinity, of a lots of 1 minus r to the n, all over 1 minus r. And as we know that r to the n tends to 0, so we get, let's clear this out, s infinity is equal to a lots of 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r, which is equal to a over 1 minus r. And this here is our lovely formula for the infinite sum of a geometric series, so long as our common ratio is between negative 1 and 1, or its absolute value is less than 1. And now we can apply it. We can apply it to this. We know that s infinite is equal to a over 1 minus r, well that's equal to 1 over 1 minus a half, which is equal to 1 over 1 half, which equals 2. And we're done. And that's all there is to it. That's how you're going to solve, find out the value of infinite geometric series. So let's click consider one here. Evaluate the infinite geometric series 3 plus 1 plus a third plus a ninth. Well, we're going to end up with a equals 3, r equals 1 third, it's equal to 1 over 3, or a third divided by 1 is 1 third, and so s infinite is equal to 3 over 1 minus 1 third, which is going to be equal to 3 over 2 thirds, which is equal to 9 halves, or 4 and a half, and we're done. I don't have another question here that, let's consider this example, what if it was 1 plus 4 plus 16 plus 64 plus dot 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 forever, what would it be in that case? Well, we have a equals 1, r equals 4, and so we'd get our infinite sum would be equal to 1 over 1 minus 4, which is equal to 1 over negative 3, which is negative 1 third. And this is wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, we're just adding out bigger and bigger numbers. So what went wrong? Well, this went wrong. R was not less than, the magnitude of R was not less than 1. And so we weren't allowed to do it. We weren't allowed to use this series at all. Now, interestingly, there are other definitions of summation, in which case you can do this. But in our standard understanding of summation, our standard way of thinking about it, it should be obvious that this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to infinity. If you want to define other ways of summing things, potentially you can get yourself an answer of one third and it can be valid, but you need to go through a clear set of definitions and rules of what your summation is going to be before that can make sense, before that can be meaningful. It can work and people have done it, but for the situation we're dealing with, this is a nonsense answer. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.